Energy, power, kilowatt hours, milliamp hours. You see these um, words on the back of electric appliances, on your electric bill and um, when charging your EV. But what exactly are the difference between them and what do they mean? You will learn the tools to forecast your energy bill and judge if that new super efficient appliance is really going to save you money. By the end of this video you'll be able to do a load of calculations like how long you can run electric, electric appliances for and how much it will cost to charge them. This video will also be useful if you're just learning about um, power and energy and just want a deeper understanding about it. This was part of um, another video about our um, off-grid camping setup and it had a section on it um, on how to choose the right power bank for your needs um, which, um, which we thought deserved its own video and that kind of evolved into this video. Um, so let's get started. Energy is the ability to do work, and we've got a brilliant video on this if you're wanting to delve deeper into the topic. Energy is measured in joules. Um, to get a feel about what you can do with one joule of energy, you can lift this pack of playing cards about a metre up. Um, this pack of playing cards weighs about 100 grams, that's 0.1 of a kilo. We're going to use these sweets to represent energy. Um, disregard the colour for now, but all that counts is that one of these sweets is one joule of energy. We're saying one of these sweets represents one joule, whereas in reality, if you ate one of these sweets, it would give you more like 14,000 joules. So if we wanted to lift this deck of cards one metre, we'd need one joule of energy. Um, if we wanted to lift it four metres, that means we'd need one, two, three, four joules of energy. If we wanted to lift two um, decks of cards up one metre, how many um, sweets or jewels would we need? Um, we would need two. One to lift um, the bottom deck of cards up a metre and another one to lift this one up. One thing that we're interested in is how much energy um, can these power um, banks hold? Is it enough to get my electric scooter to the ice cream shop? Or will it hold enough energy to charge my phone ten times? Fair enough. Now the other thing we're interested in is how fast we can get the energy out. My watch, for example, could maybe need one joule out every second. But um, something more power hungry, like a vehicle, could need something like ten joules out every second. So there's no point us having more than enough energy to get this vehicle from A to B but not being able to get that energy out fast enough to even get the vehicle moving. Let's just say this vehicle, for example, I'm making up the numbers, but let's say this vehicle needs three joules per second. So here it's, buzzing, it's beeping one joule per second, two joules per second, three joules per second. Right, let's see if I can do this. Three joules per second. If our power source can only give one joule out every second, like this, then this ain't even getting off the starting line. <laughs> even if I've got enough energy, it's not coming out fast enough to get this moving. That's why it's important to know how fast the energy can come out. What I've just been explaining to you, how fast we can get the energy out, well, that's power. Power is just how many joules, how much energy, you can get per second. And power is measured in watts. So by saying my watch needs one watt, that's saying that my watch only needs one joule every second. Simple, right? If you know the power that your power um, source can give, then you can check if a particular device can run off it. So you get your device and check um, how much watts it needs um, on the back. And um, this needs 30. Can this cope with 30 watts? Well, it can give up, it can cope with 300 watts. So, and 30 is well below that, so you should be able to. So I've plugged it in, let's turn it on. Oh, nice. Um, and it's giving out about 28 watts, um, 
So that's close to what this was, the fan was rated at, which is 30. Armed with the knowledge of power and energy, you can um, work out all sorts of things. Energy is measured in joules, power is measured in watts, and one watt is equal to one joule per second. Now, how much energy can this store? Well, on the instructions, it says that it's got 288 watt hours. This means it could run at 288 watts for an hour. So this can give up 288 joules every second, and it can keep that up for an hour. Our budget only stretches to 96 of these joules. That's a third of what this gives out every second. Um, so you're going to have to imagine that there's three times as many joules as in here. And it will give that out every second. So if we want to know how much energy is, con is contained inside this, we'll just have to count them up. Three times um, this gives us how many it gives out every second. Times that by 60 is how much it gives out in a minute. Times that, times that by 60 again gives us how much it gives out in an hour. So if this gives out 288 joules every second for an hour, and there are 60 times 60 seconds in an hour, we can find out how much energy is stored inside this portable power station when it's fully charged. In an ideal world, obviously factors like age will affect it. I put it into a calculator and it's approximately 1 million joules stored inside it. Incidentally, if we only use 144 watts, then it will last double the time, 2 hours, since we're only using half the wattage. Armed with the knowledge of power and energy, you can um, work out all sorts of things. Um, so for example, we could work out how long this fan would run plugged into this portable power station. So we wouldn't have to sit there for loads of hours um, to see when the fan stops. You can just calculate it. So we already worked out how many joules this portable charger has and I've tapped that into the calculator. This fan was rated at 30 watts and it was running at about 30 watts when we plugged it in earlier. Um, and 30 watts is 30 joules per second. So we've got how many joules that this has. We divide that by the 30. And this can run for 34,560 seconds. Divide that by 60 to get how many minutes it can run for. That's 576 minutes. Divide that by 60 again, and it can run for just over nine and a half hours. Before we continue, I just would like to mention that throughout this video, there's been a whole bunch of new jargon and calculations um, that you might just glaze over. I know that I would. So feel free to use that pause button and um, even rewind bits of the video. Let's briefly talk about kilowatt hours. We know um, what a watt hour is, it's really simple, it's just one watt for an hour. So that's one joule per second for an hour. Now, a kilowatt hour is just as simple, it's just a thousand watts for an hour. The killer means a thousand. The reason why kilowatt hours is so interesting and important is that people um, get charged for their electricity and gas bills in kilowatt hours. So we can do a whole bunch of calculations. For example, we're going to calculate how much it will cost to charge this up and make some calculations about our Tesla. Also, um, we used to be getting charged 18p per kilowatt hour for our home electri electric bill. Um, and now, this year, we're being charged 34p per kilowatt hour. That's almost double. So it's never been more important to be able to make these calculations. Let's figure out how much it would cost to charge this um, from 0% to fully charged in an ideal world. We read on the back that um, it's got a capacity of 288 watt hours. Um, but we need that in kilowatt hours. A kilowatt hour is a thousand times bigger than a watt hour. So to convert from a watt hour to a kilowatt hour, we would divide by a thousand. So we've got the 288 um, watt hours. And then we're going to divide that by 1000 and that gives us 0.288 kilowatt hours. So we get charged 34p every kilowatt hour. So this is quite simple. We've got the 0.288 kilowatt hours and we'll times that by how much we get paid, which is, I mean, we pay, sorry, um, the 34p. So we pay 9p, um, just under 10p. Um, 9.7p 
to charge this from zero to fully charged in an ideal world. <laughs> We're in the Tesla and you can see from our last charge, we've traveled 80 miles and um, used 23 kilowatt hours. Um, and it's really simple for us now to figure out how much uh, money we've spent on those 80 miles. We do the 23 kilowatts. Um, we times that by, I think it was 34p per kilowatt hour. Um, I'm going to do it in pounds, so that's zero pounds and 34 P so this will give us the answer in pounds and it's cost us seven pounds 82 to travel the 80 miles um should we see how much would um how much money we're using per mile we just divide that by the 80 miles that we traveled and we've um, done roughly 10 pence per mile Coincidentally, that's almost exactly how much that we just calculated it will cost to charge our power bank. These smaller power banks give their capacity in milliamp hours, so let's unwrap that. So firstly, if you've got two devices that give their capacity in milliamp hours, then you can compare them directly. So for example, one with 20,000 milliamp hours will have double the capacity than one with 10,000 milliamp hours. We will also quickly show you how to convert these milliamp hours into watt hours, which you can already deal with now in a variety of situations. It's curious that we've been given amps, which is current. Now it's beyond the scope of the video, but you can't work out power and energy using current alone. You also need voltage. I did some research and these typically give out a maximum of 5 volts but the battery inside gives out around 3.7 volts so it must use some sort of um, step up to get to those higher 5 volts. Now we've got 20,000 milliamps every hour and 20,000 milliamps converts to just 20 amps because 1 milliamp is a thousandth of an amp. So we know we can run at 3.7 volts and 20 amps for an hour. Handily, you can get the power by multiplying the voltage and the current. So we did the 3.7 volts times by the 20 amps, and that'll give us 74 watts for an hour. So this holds 74 watt hours, and this one here holds 288 watt hours. Now, I posed the question, would it be enough to charge my phone 10 times? Now that I've got a pretty old phone that was handed down to me, um, and we've just pulled up the stats so it gives us it in milliamp hours and um, watt hours. So let's take this opportunity to test what we've just been doing and see if we can get the same numbers. So let's convert from milliamp hours to watt hours. So over here it says it's got um, 1821 um, milliamp hours. So I'll tap that into the calculator. And then to get that into amp hours, we divide that by a thousand. That gives us 1.8. And then we just times that by the voltage, 3.82. And that gives us 6.956. Over here we've got 6.96. So if we just round up this number, it'll give us 6.96. Let's see if these really can um, charge her phone 10 times. So um, this um, portable charger has 74 watt hours. And we just divide that by the nine, 6.96, sorry, um, what hours. And yes, it can charge a phone 10 times. Now let's test the bigger portable charger. That was 288 what hours. Divide that by the 6.96. And it can charge a phone over 40 times. Theoretically. So hopefully now you can work out um, energy that this, these can store, power, depending on what you want to charge, whether it's Teslas, phones, I don't know. Yeah, how much things will cost. Yeah, if you want to compare how much devices can hold and how efficient they're going to be. Yeah. Check out our article on gurglaps.com um, to go over this video. If there's anything we've missed or any calculations you'd like us to go over, um, then let us know and we'll just update that article. Um, you may want to watch this video again um, a few times if you just want to re recap. Um, we would probably have to watch it a few times as well. Anyways, really hope you found this useful. 
um, if, let us know if, what you've used it for in the comment section down below. Yeah. If you um, liked it, just give, give us a, a thumbs like. up, please, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.